speaker before our lunch break is Professor Magnus Biskesho from Cornell University, where his research interests include political anthropology, ethnic relations, archaeology, and heritage issues, above all in East and Southeast Asia. He recently published a book on the Wa people of the China-slash-Burma frontier region entitled Stories from an Ancient Land, Perspectives on Wa History and Culture. He's also published several articles on the ongoing genocide in East Turkestan. He will share his idea on the Chinese regime's effort to deny and cover up the Uyghur genocide. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to uh, the organizers uh, and uh, for inviting me. Uh, thank you to my fellow participants and to the audience for coming. I'm very happy to be here uh, to talk about uh, the Chinese regime's efforts to cover up uh, and to deny uh, the Uyghur genocide that they're committing. Um, it struck me that uh, on this note that um, uh, you just made that the China keeps part of the denial is built on this argument that this is our internal affairs. Uh, this is something I didn't uh, write into in my presentation, but I think it's very true. It is an argument that uh, they make, and I think it's worth uh, pointing out that they, uh, they. Uh, by doing so, they also exempt themselves from the concept of universal human rights. After all, the post-World War II order is uh, with the United Nations uh, at the core, and international law at the core, is built on the idea that um, nations can be criticized. Nations can, for their internal affairs, for their internal doings. Nations can be uh, 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 critiqued by uh, others. There's no such thing as absolute uh, uh, national sovereignty when it comes to universal human rights. So this denial uh, is in effect a, a part of this uh, fascist tendency that I agree China is uh, 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 exemplifying. It's uh, a rejection of the international uh, order based on universal human right, uh, rights at, at the core. That's where this denial is coming from, and I think it's uh, worthwhile to reject it as such. Um, all right, um, when the Chinese regime launched its first wave of mass detentions of Uyghurs and other Turkic nationalities in early 2017, it was really part of a premeditated, pre-planned, pre-budgeted set of actions, including uh, all the planning for the steps that would follow the family separations, the isolation of children from their parents in Chinese-only boarding schools, the transfer of grown-ups, parents, uh, to work in forced labor, uh, the mass sterilizations of fertile women, the assault on the Uyghur language, the bulldozing of heritage, uh, and the mass detentions of Uyghur cultural leaders, all of it building on the most intrusive and comprehensive surveillance system the world has ever seen, which was built up first to enable sorting out the victims to be uh, in the subsequent uh, steps that uh, followed. Uh, however, I would argue the regime had not devoted enough attention to covering up these first steps. Either the genocide planners were animated by uh, uh, arrogance or, uh, uh, as you suggested, uh, uh, a an overconfidence of sort in what they were doing. And this led them to uh, miss, uh, to not be aware of the potential damage that could uh, be done to them and was done to them uh, by people outside of China mobilizing satellite imagery to reveal what was happening. The Chinese uh, genocide planners may have thought it would be enough just to cut telecommunications, which they did in early 2017. 
But uh, this sudden interruption of telephone lines and internet communications and the like in early 2013 was of course also in itself a signal to the world that uh, something was very wrong uh, in the Uyghur region. Uh, as a result of uh, the Chinese authorities' failure to anticipate how their massive new detention camp system was revealed to the world through the satellite uh, imagery analysis, the Chinese authorities quickly found themselves on the defense internationally. The world learned about what was happening uh, through this uh, satellite imagery analysis and by way of accompanying or complementary um, eyewitness accounts from refugees accounts spread uh, by word of mouth and in free media around the world. And these two genres uh, exposing what was happening in China gained in credibility uh, because corroborated by each other. The satellite materials showed the massive scale of the new Gulag archipelago, archipelago uh, corroborated by the accounts uh, from people who had actually been inside. And we've seen how these accounts can be matched up and therefore uh, um, helping each other uh, make the point. And as a result, China was uh, very heavily criticized internationally from two, 2018 onwards. The first uh, uh, point there was in, in the United Nations Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination in August uh, 2018. And uh, many other uh, criticisms uh, followed. Uh, the Chinese regime, of, of course, at first flatly denied that, that there were any camps, the existence of any camps were uh, uh, denied. Uh, but they now, having been exposed, uh, scrambled to backtrack and change the story, uh, admitting the existence of the camps, uh, but claiming that uh, they were vocational training centers uh, designed to steer young Uyghurs away from terrorism. And they tried to back up this version by constructing uh, a few fake school camps to which they brought gullible foreign visitors, diplomats and journalists, especially from countries uh, inclined uh, that the Chinese authorities believed to be predisposed to believe, or at least uh, embrace uh, these fake camps, and uh, notably autocratic countries in the Middle East. These efforts uh, on the part of the Chinese authorities were partially successful, but they were also undercut by some of the people they invited. For example, uh, you may remember the Jordanian uh, woman journalist who, uh, after her invited trip, uh, denounced the entire thing, and other journalists also afterwards exposed these visits as themselves part of a cover-up effort, which is, of course, exactly what they were. Um, here, the new Chinese propaganda was also undercut by its own earlier efforts domestically in China. Um, this was uh, actually uh, directly comparable to the Nazis in 1930s Germany. They sought to simultaneously run two traps for propaganda. One stream directed domestically at home audiences, another stream directed abroad at foreigners. Uh, the one going abroad was, of course, uh, the stream that, uh, both in the Nazi case and in the current Chinese case, involved in inviting gullible foreigners um, to come and uh, visit and uh, go on fake Potemkin uh, uh, organized uh, visit, uh, uh, organized spectacles, and then report them as if they were true. Uh, in the Nazi case, uh, they successfully uh, duped the International Red Cross, uh, as well as various uh, news magazines and others, to uh, endorse concentration camps like uh, the first one in Dachau, uh, opened uh, near, uh, just outside Munich in 1933. They have a wonderful exhibit uh, at Dachau that shows you uh, the various foreigners invited there and. Uh, and uh, tricked into believing that, uh, uh, as, they, as one of these reporters uh, put it, the conditions in this camp uh, meant that uh, the detainees were better off in the camp than they would be back home. Um, 
The first domestic propaganda stream, uh, again, both in Nazi Germany and in today's China, was directed internally for domestic consumption. It showed pictures of detainees in real camps, not fake ones. And the idea, I believe, was to highlight the harsh discipline made it out to these uh, targeted, uh, um, captured uh, enemies of the people, as if to reassure the domestic majority, uh, mostly Han Chinese, that these uh, dangerous people we have been telling you about, uh, who are terrorists and uh, violent and so on, we are dealing with them uh, properly on your behalf, very harshly, and here are pictures to, um, to prove it. And um, this is uh, exactly what also the, the Germans, uh, the Nazi Germans, uh, did uh, at first. But uh, because we live in this uh, new era of uh, the internet and with new technologies, this two-stream approach could only work for a short while. Because dissonances began to show globally between the picture offered to foreign observers and to internal uh, supporters, the majority of people in China that would like to see this. Um, in China's case, two factors especially ensured that, that, the, the, transfer, that the propaganda stream directed at internal Chinese audience, audiences had to be changed. They had to halt the use of uh, images <laughs> taken from inside the real camps. They were intended to be seen only by domestic audiences, but uh, because of the nature of the internet, which is uh, used in China, by, including by the Chinese authorities, but accessible uh, to audiences worldwide, uh, foreigners such as us could also see these uh, pictures and we could draw our own conclusions uh, from them, not only as the uh, fear clearly written on the detainees' faces in these uh, pictures, reinforcing the eyewitnesses' accounts of how uh, these people detained were not determined terrorists, but ordinary, innocent, ordinary people. And uh, moreover, uh, as you may recall, uh, many of these early pictures uh, intended for Chinese domestic consumption, they also featured uh, many uh, elderly uh, Uyghur uh, and Kazakh uh, people with uh, white hair and uh, beards and so on. So it undercut this uh, hastily concocted uh, uh, theory uh, from the Chinese authorities that these are vocational uh, training centers for young people to help them avoid uh, jihadism. And the question was raised many times since, why would people like these uh, need uh, vocational training? Uh, people were able to spot uh, professional, uh, senior professional people who were in this picture and definitely did not fit the category of uh, young innocent uh, people that could be duped by, by extremists. So this was a failure uh, for the uh, Chinese government and they had to stop uh, publishing these, um, these pictures. It's very interesting to compare them with the, 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 the Nazis. They, they, they assume the Nazis openly published uh, <laughs> accounts from their concentration camps. Of course, not showing the, the, the worst abuses, but showing this kind of harsh discipline, uh, the TNA contingents, as if to uh, reassure the pro-Nazi majority uh, German population that we are doing what we promised you. We're dealing harshly with all these uh, communists and homosexuals and whatnot that the Nazis were locking this up, locking up there. And the answer to this question, why would this person need vocational training, was of course they did not need any. They were swept up in the detentions because they represented the continuity of Uyghur cultural knowledge. I'm talking about older folks. Um, but this was unsustainable for the Chinese propaganda machine because unlike in the 1930s, in the time of the Nazis, the world now has recourse to commercial satellite imagery that can help us expose atrocities on the scale of China's camps. Uh, and similarly, in the same year of the military the Burmese military regime uh, burning and erasing uh, Rohingya villages as 
as part of uh, that genocide. It was another uh, big example in the same year of how this new technology was used to expose uh, what these oppressive regimes were doing, even as they uh, mistakenly believed that they could get away with it. And uh, it is uh, thus an amazing new weapon uh, uh, to be used by activists and the scholars and others outside uh, these regimes. To, uh, and there are those who say that uh, who, to counter this, the Chinese authorities have also moved uh, some facilities underground to escape detection. But it's also clear that such measures is not the rule. I'm actually not clear on how, how widespread this, this kind of measure is, how much has been dug out on the ground. Uh, but there, there, are, there are accounts of, of this. Um, but um, uh, underground, moving the, the facilities underground is not the rule. It's not the, the main story. Most of them are still above ground. And overall, the regime's rules of vocational training has actually had a certain success, even above the ground, quote unquote. Especially with those friends of the regime around the world who are already predisposed to find something uh, to, um, uh, that they could use to escape the harsh truth about uh, their atrocities, to diminish the impact, and to especially to justify their own um, uh, lack of more forceful reactions. This uh, includes not only news media or even clerics in Muslim countries eager to side with China for their own reasons. It also includes Western news media um, mistakenly uh, going for reconstructing this news as a both sides story, as if there was two sides to it. Uh, news neutrality and, and such, which I don't think can apply here. But uh, even more importantly to Western governments like France and Germany, which insisted for years that as long as there was not a UN mission to Xinjiang, East Turkestan, uh, nothing could be said or done from their governments. They needed to be a UN mission. Uh, and um, the General Secretary uh, of the United Nations uh, and the High Commissioner, his appointed High Commissioner for Human Rights, they both had a major role in what happened. Uh, High Commissioner Bachelet delayed uh, a visit she negotiated for such a vision over several years, as you know, uh, and then it finally did take place uh, in May 2022, despite much advice from around the world uh, that she should not go, since she would inevitably be put through the indignity of a fake Kwantumkin uh, spectacle, just like those news journalists have been before, but she did go. And that was a victory for the regime uh, in terms of propaganda, even though uh, it did lead to a report being published uh, at the last minute of her tenure on August 31st, 2022, uh, which one which included uh, famously the assertion that there may be crimes against humanity being perpetrated in progress in the in the uh, region. Um, <clears throat> The contrast between the Chinese regime's um, subsequent refusal to accept that UN report, even to talk about it, the vehemently condemning it, and on the other hand, the very sheepish references to this report by Bashir's successor, Walter Turk, uh, I think make it clear that this is a placeholder measure absolving Western governments of taking actions like imposing sanctions on China or activating their obligations under the genocide. Uh, convention, by which I mean initiating prosecution, or even just to threaten to prosecute uh, China over the uh, atrocities. I imagine that the visit and the report was the outcome of pressure on the High Commissioner for Human Rights from the General Secretary, Antonio Guterres. He visited China for the Olympics in February uh, 2022, and he said himself that he brought up uh, uh, again, uh, this visit with the top Chinese leader. The idea of a visit had already been shelved because it seemed like an impossible thing to do if the condition was meaningful access. That is, uh, a, a visit uh, unlike everything that had the Chinese government had offered before. Real access to uh, talk to people and visit uh, 
uh, visit sites uh, in the Middle region. But this was not going to be provided by China. Uh, of course, the, the Chinese authorities would, would not allow such a thing. They would insist on arranging every detail of, of such a visit. So what happened was that the credibility of the UN was severely damaged by this. And um, by this visit. Uh, and it also raises the question of whether Guterres himself let the UN be humiliated by the Chinese regime as the price of continuing um, business as usual in China, uh, in, in the UN with China to pursue the 2030 global development goals and climate crisis and so on. And um, this compromise that they made Actually, to me, it looks a lot like the compromise of many business leaders who keep cheering on the Chinese regime for, uh, as a pay, price to pay for business access. And this is a, a quite a powerful technique that the Chinese regime, you, you know, as you know, will use. They, they will uh, uh, overreact very harshly as if you mention this at all, if you bring this issue up at all, we're going to uh, stop talking about everything else. And many people fall for this. Uh, and and um, uh, we, we, we should note and we should remind the governments such as uh, France and Germany and uh, my own country, Sweden, uh, they had all been insisting that we can't do anything until this UN visit uh, happens. And now that it happened, what have they done? They, uh, they again have done very little. They have not adopted uh, uh, strong sanctions. Uh, even though this this visit uh, did take place. Um, okay, uh, I have a few minutes left. Uh, I have a section about um, uh, the the war in, at the United Nations with the competing letters where uh, uh, Western nations will uh, uh, write of their concern uh, about the situation and China mobilizing many countries to counter that and to suggest that there are more countries siding with China. It's very interesting to look closely at how that actually happens. There's a fantastic um, article by the uh, China media researcher, uh, David Wandurski in Hong Kong, that digs into uh, the case of uh, Cuba, stepping up uh, for China in these contexts. He researched the Cuban media, and it turns out while Cuba was at the, the UN, its official delegation was at the UN, helping China mobilize these other countries and uh, uh, win the vote uh, at the UN, the Cuban people were completely uh, left in complete ignorance because no Cuban state media ever mentioned anything about what the Cuban delegation was doing. So it's a matter of, when we see those lists of countries, we should remember that this is a matter of the Chinese government uh, with its huge personal resources uh, uh, targeting uh, limited numbers of people within each of these regimes and making them go along, uh, making them go along with this. Um, The current trends, um, unfortunately, is that the, the Chinese government have, uh, has now realized that to cover up even better uh, what they are doing, they need to stop publishing their own statistics because Adrian Zenz and scholars like him have been mining them to find out what the government is doing. They must have been shell-shocked and amazed at uh, what these foreign scholars can do with their own publicly available statistics. Now, unfortunately, the response is that demographics, uh, education, schooling, other kinds of statistics is being curtailed so that we can't find out. They're also curtailing supply chain tracking for companies that would like to avoid forced labor and so on. So they are very uh, skillfully, uh, step by step and in different areas, uh, blocking the information that might be available for us to, to um, uh, expose and um, accuse them. There is, of course, 
also they are often quite skillful efforts to plant this information. They use tourism for this, both with foreigners and domestic Chinese. They, they train uh, bloggers and uh, influencers who also are uh, put out on uh, Western social media. Um, uh, it's fascinating to discuss why these Westerners go along with parroting the, the Chinese line. But uh, the, the, we should give some credit to the Chinese propagandists for uh, successfully recruiting that number of, of people. Um, so, there is a major propaganda war. I think that in this uh, going on, I think uh, the Chinese government is certainly uh, scoring a lot of wins. It's very difficult for us on the outside uh, to, um, to stand up against their unlimited financial resources, uh, their personnel resources that they uh, put into this. Uh, one thing I think we could do better is recruit um, celebrities. Uh, when they are so good at finding, digging up influencers and having, putting them out to influence world opinion, we should get better at uh, finding and recruiting celebrities that can stand up uh, and help uh, the Uyghur cause, the victims of, of the genocide. I think this uh, effort should also have in mind the uh, Chinese domestic audiences. Uh, because I believe the biggest fear of the Chinese regime is uh, the uh, public opinion under the surface within China. There was a very curious moment uh, late November one year ago when protests broke out over the Urumqi fire in many cities around China. Often because the Chinese, uh, Han Chinese have been uh, deprived of the information of what is really happening, so they were hazy on what connection this actually had with the, the Uyghur region. But they did choose to protest on Wulumuchi Road, Wulumuchi Road in, in Shanghai. There was a point behind that. There were protesters that were crying out uh, aloud uh, expressions of solidarity with the, the Uyghurs. Uh, and, and I believe the reason why the Chinese government proceeded to cancel all the COVID restrictions, which was the original reason for all the I think was to avoid this connection to be made. Because they're more afraid of that than of, uh, uh, of COVID or anything else. They would be more afraid of uh, larger numbers of ordinary Chinese realizing what is happening, understanding what's happening, and protesting what's happening. That would be a true uh, disaster for uh, the Chinese government. And that's why they preferred to cancel all the COVID restrictions in one go remember how this happened and nobody really had an explanation for why they did it. I think uh, what I just said is, is the explanation for that. The main conclusion um, of my um, presentation is that now is more important than ever to point out, to expose the lies of the Chinese regime and provide the world with the true story of what that regime is doing. Thank you.